Welcome back to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. The ongoing debate about the housing deduction, which is contained in the Finance Bill 2023, is really attracting a lot of debate. And it seems like the government is now going back to the archives and they have come up with evidence that it was Raila's brainchild. A few days ago, the permanent, uh, the principal secretary in the Ministry of Housing said that some years uh, ago they met with Raila Muludinga in South Africa. And Raila was so much concerned about the informal sector. To be very precise, he was concerned about the insufficient number of housing and uh, clean water. And Raila really wanted this idea of housing. And indeed, from all the evidences, it was Raila's brainchild. But they are now coming up with it. At a time when the government is trying to force it down the throat of the Kenyans without looking at uh, what the public is saying, because in a sense, it has to undergo public participation. And public participation means that the citizens will air their views about what you want to do to them. Because from the last time I checked, the government wants these houses to be owned by Kenyans. But when Kenyans say that they don't want it, I mean democracy demands that you can put it on hold so that you look at areas that are a bit thorny, the, only, the thorny issues in this bill. One person who was reading in this debate trying to paint Raila Mulodinga as someone who is uh, shifting goalposts is the renowned lawyer Grand Mola, the city lawyer Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi. He is a very proponent of William Ruto policies. Sometimes back he kind of deviated and uh, switched to Uru camp because he thought that the Supreme Court was going to give Raila a win. But after realizing that uh, the bestowed Ruto with that win, he came back and he is criticizing anybody, everything that goes against some William Ruto's policies. So, this is what he said today. That the housing levy was Solar Braila's brainchild. That is what Grandwell is saying. That President William Ruto is just implementing a good idea Raila came up with. Look at that. In a sense, those who surround William Ruto are now agreeing that this was Raila's child, it was a good idea. In a nutshell, William Root is a copycat. And those are not my words, but they come from the inner core, those who believe that William Ruto is the best president. So they are saying that William Ruto never had this idea. It was an idea that uh, is, 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 is uh, new to him. No wonder he is forcing it. I want us to listen because I, I played this clip and I realized that indeed it was Raila who came up with this idea. This really should be made a part and parcel of the government policy. To realize this, the former Prime Minister says he will seek to revive the housing levy that was proposed by the government of President Huru Kenyatta but shot down by the actually led Central Organization of Trade Unions. It was a very good policy. A housing levy where the employee would be contributing 1.5 percent, the employer 1.5 percent, and that will go into a pool of a fund. And that fund can enable us to roll out massive housing development in our country. I will talk to the trade union Kotu, which led the opposition to introduction of that law. And the leadership, Mr. Tuli has assured me, they will cooperate with us. Should the Azimio one Kenya political camp emerge victorious in the forthcoming general elections, Raila says his government will not spare anyone accused of grabbing public land. In Nairobi, nearly 60% of the population live in slums. You have Kibra, you have Ukuru Kwanjenga, you have Madare, you have uh, Kwangware, and so on. This is also seen here in Kisumu. There is a shortage of housing, formal housing. This is something that needs to be arrested and reversed. If you listen carefully, 
you will understand that Raila was so much concerned about the informal setting, like I said. Remember, Raila has been a member of parliament in, in Kibera then, one of the, of the biggest informal settlements in, in the world. The, 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 the environment there, the housing, clean water is very pathetic. And Raila understands these things better than any other person. Number two, Raila has been a minister of roads and housing in the Kibaki regime. And so this is something that is very synonymous with. Remember him back then talking about the northern bypass. Some of these things are his brainchild. Remember when Kibaki came to power, he didn't start blaming Moi regime. They sat down with their think tanks and they really worked. Raila was in that, that team and of course many other people. So Raila understands all these things. But you will agree with me that Raila wanted or had proposed 1.5% deduction. William Ruto has doubled it to 3%. That is one of the differences. Those who have studied monetary finance will realize that there is a huge difference. Just mentioning 1.5 and 3, you may think that is very close. But if, for example, you are to deduct 1.5 percent of someone who's earning 50,000 and then you increase it to 30 percent you realize that there is a big difference so that is one of the differences that they are not talking about they're just giving us a general idea that it was Raila's brain a uh, brain child number two there was going to be public participation and as I said earlier public participation really means that when the people want want it, then it will carry the day. But if they don't give you the green light, if they oppose it, then you take a halt and say, what are the areas that we need to look at? This one here is not public participation. The public participation that we are talking about is a mere formality. Because I have seen Safaricom weighed in in this debate, civil servants, and they told William Ruto that this is not the time. Indeed, it is not a bad idea, but there are things that be, may, may, must be looked at. No one is saying that it's a bad idea. Everyone and anyone would want to own a house, but there are issues that must be talked out. So this one must really ensure that it is real public participation, not a mere formality. That is another difference. Raila said very well that he was going to try and talk to the Koto because Atuli then led uh, the, their members to oppose this. It is very ironical that today Atuli is very silent. He is supporting this. The other day, when the unions went to the, to, the, to the street to protest and oppose this kind of bill, he was not there because he's now sharing, you know, you know dining and whining with the, with the mighty, the high and mighty, the oppressive government. Raila said he would talk to, to them so that they can understand. Not forcing it. That is another, another difference. Number two, Raila had said that he was going to perpetuate Uhuru's policies. Remember the handshake thing and they were sharing quite a lot in common. And one of the things that Raila was going to do was to perpetuate and proceed with the subsidies. Because there was subsidy on fuel, on, on maize flour, on electricity, on, 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 on even the school fees. Of course, Raila had even said that he was going to ensure that there is free primary education from, from the baby class to the university. So, do you know just how hugely a uh, difference that would make? Remember, Kenyans are complaining that we are already facing one of the most difficult times financially. Because when Ruto came into power, he abandoned all the subsidies that were initiated by Uhuru Kenyatta. That means that the, 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 the cost of living has, jumped, has just gone high. The cost of education, school fees, cost of fuel and cost of hunger, the cost of, of, of electricity. And it means that if you add all this and want to tax, then this is double tragedy. For the Raila one, he would have continued with the, could continue with the subsidy. And then when you have slightly lower prices of, of basic commodities, then even if someone is coming to now deduct 1.5, it's a little bit better compared to this one of William Ruto because William Ruto has increased price, prices of almost everything and is also doubling the deduction. This is something that we need to mention so that we don't just mention things here and there. Indeed, all of us agree that this is a good thing.
The other thing that was there in Raila's proposal, if you listened to that uh, audio or that video, is that he was going to look at uh, holistically the grabbing of public land. So this one in, in, in Ruto's concept, I have not seen them looking at public uh, land that has been grabbed. Raila was saying that if you look at uh, public land in the cities, private develop, uh, the developers, influential politicians and businessmen have grabbed land. So Raila wanted to, to rein in so that he can, he can take back uh, the land to the, to, the, to the citizens. So that as they continue you know, building the houses, you know that we are also you know, taking back what, is, uh, what belongs to the public. So with Ruto, I have not seen them. In fact, there was uh, an accusation that there are two things that William Ruto never spoke about during, before, during and after the elections. That is the grabbing of public land and corruption. In fact, I remember when he was asked, he said that the previous government was politicizing corruption and the grabbing of land. People really talked about the, his, his hotel, Western. And at, this, at some point, I thought they were going to take back that land because it had been said it, 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 the, the, land, the, the hotel was uh, in, in, was it public land or the Kenya? It was something of the sort. But now that he's in power, I know that he's safe. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm saying in a nutshell is that the idea of, uh, of, of deducting money to give people public uh, land is noble, by the way. No one is refusing. But there are thorns that must be removed. It cannot be forceful. People must debate. Stakeholders must, must, must tell them what they think. We can wait for, for, for the economy to stabilize so that we start deducting people. I think that that, that, that would be the best thing so far. So people like Ahmed Nasir and, and P.S. Singer should not come up with the blanket you know, accusation that Raila wanted this and now he's changing goalposts. No. The idea is still the same, very noble, but let them look at these pertinent issues. I don't know what to think, but ladies and gentlemen, that is my take.